Bailey wants her old job back and Karev is like, no. Plus, Maggie has to work on an old bully of hers and Owen and Amelia come face to face with Betty, a.k.a. Brittany's parents. We're talking about all that and more. It's coming up on the Grey's Anatomy After Show. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. There we go. I gotta get you to like, <laughs> like, like uh, okay, are we in? Hi there. <laughs> hey guys, first and foremost, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, Day everybody. I am your host, Elle Marie, and I have with here my co-host. Hey guys, Elena here. Hey, Chelsea. And tonight, like I said, we're going to talk about everything that happened this episode. Amelia, Owen, and everyone, uh, Karev and Bailey, Maggie, and uh, Meredith. Yeah. They discussed the DeLuca situation. So we're going to talk about all that, our special segment, and some news tonight. Uh, what did you guys think about the episode overall? I like tonight's episode. Yeah. It surprised me a bit, though, because yeah. last week we had the heart our heartstrings being pulled yes. again and this was another feel-good episode in a sense so yeah. i was like dang right when they pulled me back in thinking yeah. we were going to get the old we didn't but yeah. it was still a good episode mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah. everyone survived their surgeries yes so. that, that was so <laughs> surprising yeah. to me like everyone came out clean yeah. um but yeah i mean it was it was it's sweet. It was. I still want something a little bit more thrilling, yeah. but I think we're gonna get that next week. Yeah, so. we were kind of, we were talking about it, Chelsea yeah. and I. It's like it's kind of a little bit of a give and take. It's mm -hmm. like one episode is like, oh my gosh, I'm crying my eyes out, and the next one is like, oh, okay, yeah, this is cool. We're yeah. coasting, but we here. don't want to coast. No, we don't want to coast. I want, we don't. I want, I want my coast. emotions to be like all over the place. And I all know over. next week that's what we're gonna get yeah. because. Oh, yes. next week. I can't wait. I literally just don't know. Oh, I can't wait. But let's go ahead and kick it off about tonight. So uh, starting it off with Bailey and Karev, because it kind of opens up with like Karev's uh, picture on the wall. And yeah. uh, Joe is like, oh, <laughs> where did that come from? You know, kind of proud of him that he, you know, is doing well in his role as interim chief, um, taking over for Bailey right now. But Bailey isn't really liking it too much. She's feeling away about it. What do you guys think about her feelings? I don't know if I just don't have as much compassion for Bailey as I used to anymore, mm. but I'm kind of just like, you did this to yourself. Like, kind of get over it, yeah. you know? I, I think know. it's typical Bailey. We mm -hmm. expect her to feel some type of way now that he's performing. If he was still struggling with being interim chief, mm -hmm. she would have not wanted her job back. She would have been like, no, I still need a break. But yeah. because he's excelling, excelling in the way that he is, mm -hmm. she feels like she's missing out. It's almost like that FOMO, like, dang, I used to be yeah. the chief. Yeah. I used to be the person they go to. So mm -hmm. I think that's the problem more so than it is the job, because mm -hmm. if she were to become chief again, she would be stressed again and she wouldn't have time for her relationship. Yeah. So I think it's Bailey being typical Bailey. She wants to be in a power position. She wants to feel powerful. She wants to feel needed. Mm. And she's I, always wanted to. And I think too, like Karev's is a cool chief. Like breakfast for the interns once yeah. a week. Like they never got so that under Bailey. I'm <laughs> like, so proud of him. Yeah, that was cool. That was really yeah, nice. Bailey was looking like, hmm. Like took a mental note. Like, oh, okay, Because truthfully, when he was saying that it helps the morale around the yeah. place, I was like, yeah, actually. It does. And we've never really gotten that. All the chiefs had been it's hard dictators. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, mead. that is true. And, and you would think Karev would be that way. Like, because he is, like, so cold and whatever. But, mm -hmm. like, maybe Joe's, like, softened it up or whatever. But, yeah. yeah, he's... I think he tried to be that way, and it just wasn't working yeah. for him. I when think he... once he got in peds, he softened up. I think that's what kind of softened him up. Yes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. But, I mean, I like him in this role, too. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. I think... I do too. Yeah. I do too. And and Richard had to call Bailey out and let her know, like, because she's she feels like that way, like kind of um, Karev is getting all the recognition that she should get, you yeah. know. And then Weber was like, well, there was a moment where I had a patient and I did everything for that patient. I kept that patient alive and everything. You know, he's here because of me. But one night he took off and Bailey was there for like an emergency surgery. And the family always sends Bailey like a gift of like a basket of pears or something. <laughs> and she's like, oh, those are your pears? <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, yes, they are. But I said that to say, to show you, you know what I mean? Sometimes you have to take the back seat and yeah. that other person is going to get the recognition and you just, we're all a team. It's teamwork. You gotta yeah. Richard's it. role is so interesting this season mm -hmm. because he is almost like the fairy god 
father <laughs> of the hospital mm -hmm. at this point where he is giving Bailey that advice and reminding her, hey, I was in that position and you yeah. were the one who do it, who did it to me. But on the other hand, Karev admitted that Weber also gave him advice yeah. on being interim chief. So he's, yeah. he's like, it's not that he's playing both sides, but he's giving advice and wisdom to everyone mm -hmm. who comes his way, which is, which is interesting because he used to like, he used to have his own agenda with things. Yeah. Th yeah. That is true. And now he's really like, okay, let me help who I can. It's not about me. I'm just doing this because I love to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. he's at that age or that point where he has no dog in the fight. Like, it's just yeah. like for the betterment of the hospital is mm -hmm. like what I'm going to contribute to. Um, and I do like seeing him in that like grandfather, like owl, like wise, wise man role. role. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, do. I do. Yeah, he's so cute. No. No, he's he's like, cute. Yeah. <laughs> Like that. A great like, grandpa. Like, not like oh a great grandpa, gosh. but like a good grandpa. Like, good like that's grandpa. what I see like <laughs> as Richard. I would love to have Christmas dinner with Richard and uh uh, I was like, even probably Catherine. Yeah, and we'll and we'll have catered <laughs> catered Christmas dinner, and I think that's amazing. No, I'm, I'm not, not here for it. <laughs> I like Weber. I think I'm with you on that. But yeah. I was like, we can leave Catherine at home. <laughs> I'm actually surprised I didn't see her this episode. She just yeah. had her surgery, like yeah. not even an inch yeah. or not a peep of anything. Maybe it's like she's still resting. Yeah, we, we've got enough catty Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> catty episode. Catherine, I like that. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and move on to the lovebirds. It's Valentine's Day. Let's talk about love. <sighs> well, before we move on to our next topic, we just wanted to say thank you guys at home for making us the ESPN of TV talk. For us to continue to grow, we could really use your help. So if you're on YouTube right now, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. If you're on iTunes, please give us a five star rating. But no matter where you are, leave us a comment so you can get involved in the conversation. Being a part of AfterBuzz TV has meant so much to all of us, and we're truly appreciative of you supporting us and doing what we love. Don't forget to tell your friends and keep enjoying our shows. Yeah, I love watching your comments. I love replying to your comments. I so please, too. yes, comment please, below, please, please. Yes. thumbs up, five star rating. Yep, love it. And every topic we have tonight, we'd like to see what you guys have to say about it. So let us know what you think about Bailey and uh -huh. her little tantrum she's having right now about her job um, and Meredith and DeLuca so let's talk about them really quickly it's wasn't a lot to talk about with them but it was still like cute to see that Meredith kind of came to a point was like okay I think I am gonna do this yeah. with DeLuca but first let me check with Maggie because they did have their thing Maggie and DeLuca so how do you so it, it seemed, I need a refresher like okay. how deep was Maggie and DeLuca That's it, what wasn't, I was it was say. pretty surface level right it seemed like a little bit of a fling right so only because Richard found out remember like they were sleeping together and they were really starting to like each other but then Maggie realized that Richard was her dad and then DeLuca realized that Richard was Maggie's yeah. dad, but he and mm. he and Richard had become best buds. So DeLuca okay. was talking okay. to Richard about the so, girl yeah. he was hooking up with. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. And it was okay. his daughter. <laughs> so that got weird. That. Right. <laughs> so then it was just <laughs> like, weird. I can't do this. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. oh, now you're smashing his other daughter. That's yeah. very weird. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Didn't that. even think about it yeah. like that. He don't care. <laughs> he, he's on a mission. You know, it's like, because you know, they're like, Meredith and Richard are like, you know, father, yeah. daughter. Yeah. Okay, well, first of all, they are not smashing. They're okay. Making love, eventually. Eventually, <laughs> it's not there yet. You Hooking know up. what? While we're on the topic, the fans in the chat room, because I was watching y'all comments last week, everyone is so for Meredith and Deluca, and the writers really, the writers basically wrote Link off this episode. Oh yeah, <laughs> he was non-existent. Joe mentioned him one time, yeah. and yeah. what I'm here to say is, y'all are gonna stop pushing Deluca and Meredith onto me. I'm not interested in them. I do not want to see them together. Oh, no. And I've said my piece. Whoa. So you're definitely not for it whatsoever. I mean, I'm, I feel like the only reason I'm really not for it is uh -huh. because everyone is pushing. The writers are pushing it on us at this point. Okay. No, you they're not force. pushing it as hard as they push Maggie and, um, and Jackson. And, well, okay. That's yeah, a push. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but like to look and, um Meredith. Y'all <laughs> like DeLuca and Meredith. I It could grow on me and I could like it. I like how cutesy they were this episode. Mm -hmm. However, comma, let me make that choice. Okay. I understand because that is how I feel about Maggie and Jackson, so I understand. <laughs> so I hear you. <laughs> but <laughs> this episode was just them. 
Yeah. Link, Link, Link wasn't even in the hospital. He wasn't even there at all. Yeah, on vacation? I mean, we needed yeah, time to she, focus on just the two of them yeah. because now we know, like, it's, like, official. Yeah, I think she made it clear, like, this is who I'm yeah. going with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, I'm here for it. I thought it was really sweet. Like, I guess it's sister code or girl code to yeah. ask, you know. Um, but Maggie really didn't seem to, yeah. to mind. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was I, – I'm here for it. I like it. I, I think like they're cute. I, I am curious <laughs> to see him with her kids. I it's think true. that's the the big thing. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I, I think it's fun. Yeah. She needs something fun and light. Mm-hmm. And I think he's the, like good for that. I do love <laughs> the pantsuit she was wearing. Oh, yes. When she, dis- when she told him that they were yes. going to go on a date. Yeah. I love that look. We mm-hmm. rarely see her with her hair down mm-hmm. nowadays. So I was here for that. I, I thought there were cute moments. Mm-hmm. I just don't want it to be Maluk- Merluka. <laughs> well, get ready. Because <laughs> that's where we're going. <laughs> uh, but speaking of Maggie, so... Like we said, she kind of didn't really seem to mind. Yeah. But really, when Meredith asked her about um, her and DeLuca, Maggie had just gotten information about an old classmate of hers who's basically like a bully towards her. Yeah. And she came in the hospital for her, Maggie, to operate on her. But Maggie was like, she didn't want to. Yeah. She did not like this woman. She was a bully. What did you guys think about that relationship, that whole situation? Good old Kiki. Um, yeah, I would have felt really uncomfortable. I would have felt really uncomfortable being yeah. Maggie and having to do that. Um, I, however, think I probably more so would have wanted to do the surgery and mm-hmm. done it successfully mm-hmm. just to, like, rub it in her yeah. face that I am the best mm-hmm. and, like, whatever. Like, I wouldn't have needed that pep talk that she yeah. got. Like, I would have been, like... I, I feel the like, same way. I would have yeah. been like, oh, 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 how these tables turn. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Your it life was, is in my yeah. hands. It was super <laughs> annoying. Really? Having the bully come back and and for her to be forty three years old and still <laughs> living in, in in the med school mentality, like as soon as she that came back, she yeah. was like magpie. Like it would have been different had she come back and she was a bully, but immediately she was this different person. Mm-hmm. No, she was still the same bully that she was then and yeah. that part was annoying because at what point do you grow up and then you had the audacity to show up at my work to come ask me for help and you still call me magpie <laughs> I don't have time. no 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 that's not what we're doing it mm-hmm. was a little bit like mine yeah you know, yeah you know and then she wanted to have the breakdown about oh if if there is a hell and i'm dying that's where i'm going you damn right that's where you're going <laughs> like what does this have to like so granted i did appreciate that she had that moment Mm -hmm. i just wish that when she came in that was it and we could have watched maggie work through her feelings regardless Mm -hmm. yeah you know what i mean she didn't have to still yeah be in the bully position but like they showed she didn't have like an emergency contact so she's kind of alone so unfortunately sometimes there are people who are still like that like they don't evolve basically exactly and they get stuck i know some people still from college that are still like that mean girl mentality Mm. and that's just who they are and Mm -hmm. like maybe they're surrounded by people that encourage it or whatever but like yeah it's unfortunate but you would think like under her circumstances maybe she'd be a little bit more humbled Mm -hmm. by it and like kind of drop the ego but no kiki was not about that Mm -mm. i'm happy that it was a successful surgery and that meredith assist with it yeah and that they came to some kind of solution i just really want like i think i think what annoyed me the most is that maggie was still affected yeah Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. Yeah, she with was that. like very, like very much holding on to mm-hmm. it, and like that was the annoying part for me. Was like, get over it. Yeah, like look at who you are now. Mm-hmm. Like you don't need to be concerned about this woman. Yeah, because I definitely would have corrected her if I was Maggie. Like it's not Magpie anymore. Right, it's Maggie Pierce, head of cardio, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like get her checked. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it's like you're not you're not this young girl, shy girl that was in med school at the time. You are a wonderful woman now. Stand up and be yeah. that woman, you yeah. know? So I, I yeah, I agree with that We just want her to aspect. see herself as mm-hmm. we see her. Like, she is amazingly yeah. talented. She's super smart. She's beautiful. We want that Maggie. And yeah. I think that's why I'm not that, like, comfortable with the Maggie and Jackson relationship. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like she's just so submissive in that. Like, yeah. she's not very, like, strong in who she is. And maybe if she was a little bit more confident in that, I'd be You'd more comfortable. Like I would, yeah. yeah. I think that's what it is. That's interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting point. Huh. It is. We'll just have All to right. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she develops into yeah. this. I hope voila. so. Yeah, like a strong woman. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I just feel like she's, she's 
she has everything on paper, but she mm-hmm. doesn't like project it. Yeah. You know? And then it's like with with her and Jackson, it seems like right after the whole uh, situation with um, Catherine. And it's like they don't really need to lean on each other anymore. Yeah. Like their ca- chemistry in this episode was like when Jackson came to her and he was talking to her and she was like kind of out of it. And then she told him what was going on. And he's like, oh, OK, whatever, whatever. And he kind of was like around her chair. I thought he was going to, you know, rub her shoulders yeah. or hug or something. It was just like, oh, shake the chair and walk off. You know what I mean? Like, that's not I love you chemistry. Yeah, but, I'm with you. He, but he did say great expressing. Yeah, because she's always had a hard time expressing expressing herself yeah so this could i i enjoyed that part because finally it wasn't whoa me show me attention yeah. i'm sad it was this is what i'm dealing with i need to figure it out and he allowed her to be there yeah without trying to overcompensate now usually we would get annoyed because then she's like whiny about it True. Yeah. and she wasn't yeah. she let it out and she moved on True. she didn't I can say, appreciate that he's not appreciating you know yeah. Yeah. whatever yeah. the chemistry was still uh but i can appreciate that <laughs> Now we get uh, Amelia and Owen get a shock. Oh, God. We finally meet uh, Brittany's parents. I was ready to fight them. I was like, just go ahead. Because I saw your face. Just go. I was ready to <laughs> fight them. I like the mom until she's switched up. But I was ready to fight. Yeah, same. Because um, the, the mom is like kind of expressing to Amelia like she felt guilt, you know, like as if she was a bad mom and felt like maybe Amelia was judging her and all these other things because how can your daughter go missing for, what, a year and a half? Yeah. You know, and you haven't found her, you not know, you not know about um, your your grandchild and things like that. And so Amelia felt sorry for her and she opened up about her past addiction to let her know, like, look at me, I'm a doctor, you know what I mean? So I was this great student and this great kid, but I became an addict as well and I did all those things that Betty is doing. Um, Interchange between Betty and Brittany just for go with it um (laughs) so you know she opened up and then later on the mom tells the husband and they just throw it in amelia's face i knew as soon as she said like i cringed because i knew it was going to come back to Mm -hmm. like manipulate the situation um and i really wish she hadn't said anything like i understand why she said something Mm -hmm. to like comfort her yeah but like i didn't like i don't know like i felt like the parents didn't do enough like I wanted more of an explanation on how they let their daughter be missing for a year and a half. Yeah. You know, like, and how you didn't know where school she was in and all this stuff. Like, I just, it was confusing to me. Like, yeah. how, like, I get it, mm-hmm. kind of, but, like, there needed where to be Where was more. the search party? Yeah. You know? Yeah. A year and a half? Yeah. Like, what the heck? That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I didn't like how they got off kind of, like, scotch-free. And yeah. then had the audacity to say that they're taking Leo for the night. Like, what? Like, no. It was interesting because... When the mom came in, she came in with the wait, who are you? How'd you meet? Mm-hmm. And yeah. that, yeah. so that was what we I expected at least. So it was also it was interesting to know that she didn't keep that same energy. Yeah. But then again, it's a year and a half, and you watched your your daughter change. You watch her become a drug addict. Outside of you searching for her and making sure she's alive, mm-hmm. you do go a little deeper especially if she's in a school system, especially if there was a social yeah. worker involved or someone for the government. Th- that, I'm, a, I'm in agreement yeah. with you, there was some confusion there. But when it comes to Amelia and the mom, I do love that Amelia expressed that she was a drug addict. It was it was a bad decision, maybe, but I love that Amelia has stuck with being an advocate for mm-hmm. those who are addicted. Mm-hmm. So that's where she was coming from when she said it, and obviously we, we could all understand why she, why she did it. Mm-hmm. But it was also to help the mother who was getting ready to beat herself up for yeah. not having her daughter for a yeah. year. Yeah. It's yeah. like, okay, you're another person who who doesn't see it right. how we see it. And because I am an addict, I can give you this perspective. Mm-hmm. So for the mom to use that moment against Amelia, that Oof. that's what was trifling because literally I only told you that so that you can have a new perspective mm-hmm. when it comes to you and your daughter. Yeah, to right. have some so comfort. You, you wouldn't feel like a yeah. bad mom. And I totally agree with that. I just like I knew as soon as she said it that, that that's gonna where go they there. were going to go yeah. with it, you know, cuz it was like it, it, the way she said it too. She was like I'm a drug addict. She mm-hmm. didn't say I was a former drug addict like or I've been clean for so many years. She said I'm a drug addict mm-hmm. and I know how like so like I knew as soon as she said it it was going to be twisted into something else. Yeah. That, oh. that upset me. I yeah, think Amelia's and... been very mature she with the been. parents coming, oh, yeah. the mm-hmm. way that she's handled tonight's episode yes. and the mm-hmm. things that are transpiring. I think that she's handling it very well. Mm-hmm. I agree with yeah. that. Uh, much better than Owen. 
Yeah. But at the same time, you know, Owen has a little bit more invested because he was um, trying to adopt Leo by himself. Yeah. So, you know, maybe there's that's where there's the disconnect a little bit of why Owen is so um, taken aback by everything that's going on with the parents showing up and then him, the parents uh, wanting to go see Leo, holding him and, you know what I mean, just being in awe of the baby and Owen can't take it. He has to, like, walk out of the room. Um, and then not only that, there's a patient that he has, a young kid, 16, 17, that Cold. shot at a parade. And um, you can see, like, he has that feeling of, like, this dad may lose his son. And, like, Owen is kind of going through that same yeah. thing. Like, I may lose him. And he's really feeling that and going through it. How did you guys feel about Owen's whole situation this episode? I mean, I feel for him. Like, I totally understand where he's coming from. And I think the difference between him caring so much about Leo than Amelia is Amelia was more so aligned with Betty and, you know, Owen was with Leo. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. like, his love and, like, his attention. Like, we didn't really see Amelia, like, you know, get mm-hmm. close to Leo and have moments with Leo yeah. and stuff like that. So, of course, he's going to have more of a reaction to it. And, I mean, he's already a very reactive person as is. So, I it, it broke my heart. Like, it made me sad. Mm-hmm. And I loved when he stood up to the parents. It was, mm-hmm. like over my dead body yeah. like you're not taking my kid True. and I was like I'm here for that yeah like, yes because yes. like I was saying last week when it comes to the courts it may be hard and they may because sometimes they don't take everything into consideration they just may look like well they're the biological grandparent yeah you know they can have him temporarily blah 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 like they it may go to them first but like Owen was saying, well, I am the legal guardian in this moment, though, so you will have to fight me for him, and you guys don't know him. He doesn't know you. This is a child, you know, a baby, and they are not comfortable around people they're not they're not familiar with like you you look at it like oh it's your family you're my grandchild but that baby's like I don't know your baby doesn't know so my heart also broke broke for Owen I really felt for him in this episode on multiple occasions Mm -hmm. but when it comes to Leo I love that he stood up to the parents. I also just don't understand how, as the grandparents, you have not seen this child. You did not know about this child. Why do you think you can just pick up the child and spend a night with the child? Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. makes no sense to me. And and Amelia was right in calling Owen about Owen out about wanting what's best for Leo, mm-hmm. but they also needed to, to own up to what's best for him. It's not yeah. in the child's best interest to stay a night with complete strangers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The baby does not know you. You do not know the baby. It's mm-hmm. going to be hard for you to put the baby to sleep. Yeah. You, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like had the parents been a little like a little more calm yeah. about the situation and really tried to talk through it or even said, hey, we're interested in staying like, you know, staying around or mm-hmm. something, I think something would have been worked out. Yeah. But the mm-hmm. fact that he was like, Oh, they're gonna put a crib in the hotel and this yeah. and this and that, you you gotta slow down. Because yeah. yeah. I mean, and there were like no questions asked, like, yeah, Oh, have you is... been taking care of him? So what is his this, what is his schedule? Yeah. What is he like you know what I mean? I like there were no it, questions. The parents didn't really seem appreciative of them taking care of Leo and Betty. Like they took in your child took care of her, took her to school, like, tried to get her clean, like, mm-hmm. did all these things, and then took care of Leo, like, all this stuff. And not once did they say thank you or, yeah. oh, my God, like, nothing. Like Because so they I'm could have like, been out on the street without their help. Yeah. And a baby on yeah. the street? Like, yeah. come on. Brittany Betty could have ran into <laughs> anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> she could have made home with mm-hmm. anyone else mm-hmm. besides Amelia and Owen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, her life could have been completely different. Yeah. Thankfully, like the baby's healthy and yeah. she mm-hmm. stood was off drugs long enough while she was pregnant. Big grazed by two surgeons. Like, yeah. Wow. Give me a break. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like dream situation. While we're talking about the father son aspect with Owen and Leo, I want to bring up so Colin and his dad Seamus. So when Colin was about to die, um, his Seamus started mentioning how they were talking about school shootings yeah. and they yes, were going and they were going into that and I just thought on the writer's part it was perfect mm-hmm. because today's Valentine's Day and Valentine's is the anniversary of the Parkland shooting so for the for this episode to air tonight with mm-hmm. those lines and Shamans and and Colin even though it wasn't the exact incident mm-hmm. which I feel would have been a little too sensitive yeah. I love that they did speak about it that Owen and Avery talked about 
not wanting their kids to go to school, church, school, churches, like basic yeah. malls, nowhere. So I just love that they were still, the writers were mm -hmm. spreading advocacy mm -hmm. about what's actually happening yeah. in our world. Yeah, I, I almost that. forgot about that. I'm yeah. glad you mentioned it because I also wrote down how um, Seamus was saying that there was a shooting in their area, like a, a school shooting. Yeah. They changed the law, the gun laws, and yeah. he was like, it never happened again. Yeah. You know, like the, the writers were like trying to put in yeah. their perspective of how they feel about gun laws. Like if we do take make some changes mm -hmm. maybe these shootings will happen less often and i love that about craze because they always make some type of political or social statement mm -hmm. throughout the show and i think even um kind of next week looking forward with the whole like drug overdose like yeah. that's something that's going on in our society mm -hmm. and like i love that they bring light to it in a like in the format in which they do so. yeah I also want to know what you guys think at home. So please comment about the topic. Mm -hmm. Like, do you yeah. feel like it was done in a tasteful manner? Could they have gone more in depth about it? Let us know what you think about the timing of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of that. Hit us up. We'll read that and shout you guys out next week. Um, let's. I want to talk about Teddy Ooh. and uh, her life. <laughs> it's growing on me, guys. It's growing <laughs> on me. Her and Karasik, I'm like, ah. Uh, I guess I'll take it. It's growing um, on me. They're so cute. But she runs, she ends up having a patient who basically is her, kind of. Basically. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> she has a situation. So the, the patient, Lucille, she comes in and there's these two men right by her side being so attentive to her. And everyone's like, okay, sir, <laughs> whoever you are to her. You know what I mean? And then here comes Karasik just like... Um, calling one of them the husband mm -hmm. and it was like he was wrong the other one was the husband and one was the best friend so it basically was like Amelia's situation kind of now she's getting into Karasik so that'll be like her love yeah. and then she's still gonna be super close to Owen she's close to him and now they're gonna have a baby together yeah. so it was kind of like a mirror image of like what her life except like. Teddy and Owen had sex and are pregnant with child oh yeah and <laughs> that, Lucille and what was his name Lu Julian Lucille yeah. and Julian yeah. Yeah stuck to being friends True. that's where you went wrong teddy True. Yeah. <laughs> um but i thought it was a really cute way to kind of like you know break through to her like mm -hmm. yeah i can't have him as my good friend yeah. i can't have him as my best friend and be happy with somebody else mm -hmm. and i mean that couple or that truffle whatever they were calling it <laughs> <laughs> they were really cute like mm -hmm. the men were really cute and it, it did get funny like the um i think it was julian was saying like remember you're dizzy and you had this and, da, da, da. and the husband was like you never said that to me like i didn't know yeah. about that like wait what do you mean it was just like <laughs> oh like, that's yeah. sweet mm -hmm. but like i don't know I, I i liked it and i really liked how they did it and i'm happy she has came to the revelation that yes. classic is the choice mm -hmm the right road to go down and, at, and i think they're yeah. cute together at first i was surprised with teddy but maybe because she has slept with owen because at first she was like oh her um lucille and julian have to be like friends with benefits yeah like she just didn't believe that they were like only friends yeah. and i was like well you and owen kind of used to be that way but then i remember they, she's not pregnant by him so yeah that's probably <laughs> they why. also <laughs> always wanted to be together though when they were friends that is true yeah. and they didn't know how to explain it so they had they never come to terms with just being friends mm -hmm. really yeah. yeah someone was always secretly in love or whatever the case may be true so that's interesting yeah we'll that see a good point i think though you know what I'm going to save it for predictions. Uh-oh. Okay. Because oh, okay. I think it might be a prediction, so I'm going to stay in my lane. <laughs> stay in my lane. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, we're going to, um, let me see, anything? Because sometimes the little things I might miss or forget. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Because we're going to go into our special segment in a minute. Uh, I I'll think I'm good. Outside of the fact that Link wasn't present in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about Link. Um, <laughs> so moving right along, we will get into our special segment, Who Served the Cure? Yes, yes so, for the cure. Yes. For those of you who um, may have forgotten, this segment is just about our favorite either moments or quotes of the show, uh, of this episode. So who wants to start? Uh, uh, you will go ahead. Yeah. Okay. yeah. My cure was between Meredith and Maggie. Oh my God, um, do you have my cure? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, technically Meredith is just a cure mm -hmm. only because of how much she's grown as a sister uh -huh. in, in relationship wise. Yeah. The fact that she wanted to run her and DeLuca by Maggie was big steps for Meredith. Yeah. From going, from not knowing how to be a sister to being a sister. Yeah. And then 
being like just the moments that they shared of letting her know that she, she has her back, stepping mm -hmm. up to assist in a surgery, that really warmed my heart, and I was very proud of yeah. Meredith. Yeah. So yeah. I think she. If I had a heartbreak, she cured me. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, kind of piggybacking off of that. I liked when when Mer Meredith was in that room with her and like kind of talking with Maggie through the, the her uh, Kiki's heart or whatever, mm -hmm. and you know helped her with the idea. And then she was like, you know, you have a sister now, so if that bully gives you any trouble, I got your back. Like yeah. I thought that was really cute that and really sweet. Cute. And then Maggie kind of turned that around later on in the episode when mm -hmm. talking about Deluca, like I got your back. Yeah. So that yeah. That was they've that grown. Was really cute. Yeah. They really that have. That was a sweet moment. They I'm really have. Like, oh. They've grown. They really have. <laughs> well, my cure moment is um going back to Lucille and um her little triangle situation, but with her husband when he kind of talked to Teddy yeah. and he explained like the situation and he was like, um, it's certain ways that Lucille is with him i forget his name with the husband that he's not with julian mm -hmm. meaning like she's possessive she is a little bit jealous and she really kind of cares more so he does see that um and then that some certain ways that julian is with his girlfriends that he isn't with lucille mm -hmm. and he was like basically they realized they wanted their love to be easy yeah and i was like oh so that's why they stayed friends like yeah. we like this it's easy i don't and i, I don't want to lose you basically yeah and i know if we complicate this we add sex we add the heavy feelings yeah it's probably done yeah so i like that that he was like they chose to make their love easy and stay friends. I agree. That was my cue. That's interesting. Yeah, that was cute. I don't know if it's, I could be in a friendship I relationship say, like that. Loaded. But yeah. <laughs> I don't think if so. If it either. works for you, good for you. Thought I could, and then I messed it up. I it was no longer easy. All right. Okay. Loaded. <laughs> longer easy. Um, <laughs> all right. So our next segment is our Grace Anatomy memes. I'm so ready for these memes. I've been loving. <laughs> All memes today, period. Yeah. Just because it's, yeah. Val Valentine's, because it's Day. Valentine's Day. Yeah. So it's yes. been pretty great. Nice and the first one. Ah. Ooh. Ooh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so our first one is my fave Derek Shepard, McDreamy. Hmm. McDreamy. Or, 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 or not. <laughs> There we go. Yay. There's Derek. It's a beautiful day for you to be mine. He's so corny. I miss oh, him so much. Oh gosh. I miss Derek. So handsome. It's a beautiful right. day. It's so perfect. <laughs> Next one, we'll go to George O'Malley. Y'all, this one, though, I jump in front of a bus for you. you hand that to me. Epic. Like, yeah. <laughs> I have no words Epic. for that one. Just because <laughs> literally when I saw it, I was like, oh, I felt it. I was like, his his was like, my least favorite death. Like, it was the worst. Oh, like, what? Was, like, they didn't know it was him the whole time. Like, but that I knew. Bothered yeah, me. but, oh. We, we kind of. It was like, the mo I will never forget that moment when, like, he um, wrote in Meredith's hand, 007, because that's what they used to call him. I was like, oh. <gasps> Like, I mean, even though I knew, like, they didn't know. And so when that was the way for him to tell them, I just was like, oh. Like, I feel like if they knew, there would have been more urgency and, like, whatever. Like, I think it, he was done, though. Too. No, I was going to say, but, like, I just, it bothered me. I think like, it that bothered me. Um, and then our next one is Denny. And he <laughs> make my heart stop. Oh. oh. <laughs> These things are spot on, okay? Like, they just bring right? so many memories back. Like, shout out to whoever made these. So, so many memories. Like... <laughs> Poor Denny, Because I'm thinking about Izzy. And... I know. Oh, gosh. Man. She was trying to do thing. the right thing. Well, like, screenshot oh, these memes yes, and yes. send it to your someone special. <laughs> <laughs> Or not. Or not. Or not. <laughs> no, I think they're cute. Yeah, go ahead and send them. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get into some news. After Buzz TV News. All right, guys, so we kind of talked about this a little bit last week. Um, possibly a character coming in being Derek's sister, so Amelia's sister. Mm -hmm. um, they have casted a woman named Michelle Forbes, um, but they haven't listed any details as to who she could be playing. So mm. I don't know. She kind of looks like she could be a shepherd. Yeah, the dark mm. hair. Yeah. yeah. But there's also speculation that she could be playing Joe Wilson's mom, a strange mm. mother. So we don't know, but I think mm. both of those storylines are very interesting. I was no. going to say, no, I mean, I want to know more about Joe. I mean, we still, we know a lot now. They've yeah. like, you know, really developed her character, but I think it'd be interesting to see her family background. Yeah. I definitely want to know more about Joe, but but not in the sense of her having an estranged 
mom. Yeah. I don't. Coming I feel. Back I feel like Joe's already gone through so we much. We went mm-hmm. through the like the, past. Yeah, we went yeah. through the drama of the ex and yeah. you know her sleeping in her car and etc. I don't want that to be because she's in such a good place. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. keep moving forward in yeah. a sense. Yeah. But maybe, maybe that's exactly why she needs the mom. Maybe, so maybe, maybe they can mend the relationship and it gets better. I don't know. He Karev did it, so why can't she? Yeah, true. Yeah. Right, and that was kind of just going back to earlier. That was a cute moment when Joe was taking the picture yeah. of him by his picture. I'm gonna send it to your mom. Yeah. So yeah, maybe it'll be like she'll come back and they'll mend their relationship. Let's hope that it's like on a positive note. Yeah, not yeah. something bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I just want to add something real quick. I didn't have like a photo for it or anything, but um, a few days ago I watched this movie called I think it was Indivisible with Sarah Drew and I forget his name, but the paramedic that she married, Uh they were in a movie together and they were like a religious couple. So um, the paramedic played like a chaplain in the army and they were like very, it just seemed like to me, it seemed like a continuation of like where they are now. (laughs) And it had actually of several like Grey's Anatomy um, cast members in the movie. Yeah, That happens to me all the time. I watched a movie (laughs) with Derek and Owen in it. And I kept calling them Derek and Owen in this whole new movie. Yeah. It's just, it's ridiculous. Like, it was, it was Sarah Drew, the paramedic. Um, ben was in it. Uh-huh. Warren. I forget his real uh-huh. name as well. But, like, he was in it, too. The man who kind of, like, shot up the hospital that one time. I think it was, like, season six, I oh, believe. Oh, yeah. He was in it. So, I was like, this is, like, a Grey's Anatomy movie. But, like, <laughs> if you guys are fans of Sarah Drew, go ahead and, like, check out that movie. Um, it was There's really cute. There's a lot cute. of you guys yeah. out there. Yeah, right? <laughs> was really cute. Uh, last but not least, we have a really, really cute yeah. clip of our favorite couple. It's <laughs> one favorite couple, too. <laughs> it's Ellen Pompeo and um, so Andrew DeLuca. Cute. I really need to get people's real names together. <laughs> but look at this. Okay, this, happy dancing. This is what, a cute video. They yeah. look like they're having a great time. Look at that. Yeah, it, She's on, so cute. On Ellen Pompeo's Instagram, just like having a good time dancing to Ariana yeah. Grande. So yeah. she's, she's the cutest. She's, she's really cute. Yeah. I love her dance moves. She has like a cute like mom dance vibe right. going but it's like a cool mom thing you know so I like it I'm here for her I like DeLuca's just like in awe yeah he, he doesn't her, know what to watching do her, yeah. yeah it's like <laughs> Do you think, girl? Cute. First of all, he didn't even work this episode. He just stalked yeah, around he the hospital, stood around. staring around. That's, that and y'all think true. that's not creepy? No, it's sweet. It's oh. romantic. It is romantic. She lost herself in him at one point. In it was his just like, eyes. Oh. She lost herself in the possibility of getting laid. Let's be clear. And him. And yeah. him. He, right. does, he does have a great body. So yeah. I'm not even every, hating listen, on that. Every man doesn't make you get lost in him just because you think, ooh, listen, ooh, honey. Ooh. Right? I'm just <laughs> All right, before we get out of here, <laughs> let's get into our predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. I already know that everyone in the chat is going to drag me for my prediction. Oh, well, let's hear let's it. Let's go. Right. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you tee it up so well. Right. Okay, so <laughs> here's why. Because remember, I was a Teddy and Caras. Tom Hater. I can't Mm -hmm. say his last name, guys. It's it's a struggle. (laughs) I was a Teddy and Tom Hater, and then I kind of liked them this episode, but with Owen and Amelia on the rocks, and Teddy choosing him, choosing Tom on tonight's episode, I just feel like there's going to be a way for her to get dragged back into Owen Owen. after bringing Tom on board. Because he he, he was already like, you know... Blowing up on her, ma- yeah. basically making Teddy make a decision, especially with the Lucille situation. And when she caught Owen into the stairway and she was like, it's me, talk to me. I feel like Owen being in a low place with Leo and then with Amelia, I don't think that they're going to last at all, Owen and Amelia. Yeah. And I think it might bring Teddy back to Owen. I mean, it makes sense because it's like that like classic kind of storyline of like the bad boy Mm-hmm. finally settling with the girl and then the girl breaking his heart and yeah. then he's bad again but I, I, I'm I hoping you're wrong <laughs> I am yeah I'm, I'm kind of on the like I don't think him and uh, Amelia are gonna make it cause I don't like he how he kind of throw stuff in her face as well yeah like he got he upset does. about the whole thing like why did you tell them you were an addict yeah. and just like he blows up a little bit too much i feel um at I amelia agree. so i don't know it's like but i'm still not here for him and teddy anymore and i used to be i don't know i think I it's just because i'm together. tired of them yeah, yeah. i'm the over it just, it's exhausting yeah. i don't want them together but, but you just feel like that's i feel like just from t- tonight's episode mm-hmm. i don't know it gave me those vibes yeah and i guess that would be my prediction is that 
Amelia and Owen aren't really going to make it. And I think that this next week's episode is really going to pull on their relationship even more. And um, like we said with with um, Betty, Brittany, and Leo, that Amelia is more attached to Betty, Brittany. I'm just stealing her. Yeah. <laughs> by name from you. Um, and so she's going to be feeling that struggle more because as we see, she comes in and has, you know, she's overdosed and things like that. And uh, Owen's going to feel a way about that. And so I think that's going to, like I said, put a strain on their relationship yeah. even more. Uh, so I think we lose Betty Brittany. Oh. I do. I think so too. Oh. I think we lose her. Um, and I actually disagree with you guys. I think that Teddy and Amelia, or Amelia and Owen, Owen. will make it. Um, and it's going to be hard, but I think they're going to fight through. But yeah, hmm. that's my prediction. Okay. I think Owen's also going to keep Leo. I do agree I with hope that he too. Does, yeah. I do agree with mm-hmm. that. Like I think with Betty Brittany dying, like I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think there's gonna be something. In the, yeah, yeah. I think she may end up telling her parents before she die. I want Leo to stay with Owen, or like wrote mm-hmm. something. Wrote, or something, yeah, maybe whatever, she wrote you know? something. Ooh, yeah. yeah, I hope so. Because yeah. I do. I want Owen to keep um, Leo. Yeah, I do. Like too. I said, the courts sometimes they get fickle. Sometimes you can get a good judge that's like, well, this is where the child is comfortable. This is where yeah. the child has been. This is where I'm gonna grant him. Um, to stay with Owen, but you never know. So I guess we just have to wait, wait and, and see. see. Yes. Yes. Well, until next week, guys. I am your host, El Marie. You guys can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at El Marie TV. And Elena, checking out. You can follow me on all social platforms at Hey underscore It's Lay. And I am Chelsea Sark Jones. You can find me on Instagram at C underscore S Jones and online at Chelsea Sark Jones dot com. All right. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys Bye. in the comments. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the host only. They do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.